when we look at the video stream, there are going to be different types of frames. There are iframes, intraframes, which hold all of the data about that specific frame, similar to how a PNG or a GIF are going to store data about that image. And then there are p-frames, partial frames, which store partial data about that frame. They are also dependent on past frames that were there. So a p-frame is encoded based on the differences that existed between a previous frame and the current frame. We take that difference and we encode only that. In a video stream in WebRTC, and also in video conferencing, what you will have is a stream of p-frames that are dependent on each other. So each frame looks at the previous frames, then make changes, look at the changes between these frames and encodes them. This is great as long as there is no packet loss in the network. Once we hit packet loss, then we lose such a p-frame and we lose the whole chain of frames because they are dependent upon each other. And then we need to retransmit an iframe or to send a new iframe. Temporal scalability works slightly different. We have two separate layers or more. In our case, we're going to use L0 and L1, and we want to start by sending 30 frames per second. So we've got a keyframe. Everyone depends on that keyframe and also on another dependency, which is the L0 frame. So I've got my L0 frame here. It's dependent on the keyframe. Now I'm going to encode an L1 frame. So the next frame is going to be dependent on the keyframe and on L0, the differences between them and L1. Next, I'm going to encode another L0 frame. This one is going to only be dependent on the previous L frame, not on L1. Now, now I'm going to encode another L1 frame, which is dependent on both L0 and L1, the two previous frames. I'm going to continue with this chain of dependencies. What is this exactly glued for? Now I can make a decision, for example, to throw 15, 15 frames per second simply by dropping all L1 frames. I'm still going to be left with a dependency between the L0 frames. This is exactly what temporal scalability is. It allows us to, to build a dependency tree within our encoder across different frames and then throw certain frames to get a lower frame rate. Temporal scalability is available in VP8 and only in simulcast. In VP9 and AV1, you'll have SVC scalable video coding, which includes temporal scalability, but part of SVC. So VP8 has, has temporal scalability in simulcast. It used to have in the past three temporal layers, but now it has only two. Google decided to change the implementation to support only two. It effectively increases the alternatives that are available to an SFU from three to six. We've got a selective forwarding unit and that selective forwarding unit has a bitrate that it receives from the client, 30 frames per second. If it used none of these techniques, then whatever I receive, I need to send out. Since we are going to use simulcast, we're going to have three different streams coming into the uh, SFU from each client or up to three streams, each one at a different bitrate that denotes different quality. Using temporal scalability, we increase that into six, just by being able to drop some of the frames and reduce it from 30 frames per second to 15 fr frames per second. This added flexibility means that we can support larger calls with higher quality than we could without it. To learn about more terms, go to webrtcglossary.com and if you want to look at my full training course for WebRTC, check out webrtccourse.com. Thank you.